Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this will hopefully be a rather short video about uh, liquid metal on GPUs. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So first of all, uh, this, what we're looking at right here, is a very low quality picture of an HD7972 VaporX uh, 3 gig card that I got sent as fan mail because it doesn't run. And I think it's pretty obvious from this picture why it didn't run. I mean, it might still not run. I've cleaned it. There's no more short circuit on the memory power rail, but um, that doesn't mean it runs yet. There could still be, like, liquid metal bridging uh, data lines or something, and then, then it's like, okay, well, I guess I'm using the card as a parts card or for practicing desoldering memory chips, um, whichever I, I find more interesting. Um but hopefully it just works after the clean. That that would be ideal. If it just works after getting clean, that, that would be perfect. But, um, yeah, so I don't think, like, personally, I don't put liquid metal on GPUs. Um, I do put liquid metal on CPUs. I think putting liquid metal on CPUs is a perfectly sensible thing to do. Um, but I don't think it's worth it on GPUs because uh, when you put liquid metal on a CPU, you get your, you know, 5 to maybe 30 degrees Celsius temperature reduction. Actually, possibly more. Like, it really depends how much heat you're trying to, you know, run through the CPU, like how much power you're trying to run through the CPU. And the more power you're pushing through the CPU, the bigger the, the cooling improvement that you get out of switching from thermal paste to liquid metal. Um... But the thing is, after you get your, you know, temperature reduction on a CPU, you can go and crank up the voltage and you get more overclocking headroom out of that. And therefore, putting liquid metal on a CPU is, in my opinion, at least somewhat worth it and relatively low risk because you can always take the CPU out of the motherboard. Uh, if, like, if you spill the liquid metal on the motherboard, uh, you know, like, yeah, I guess you'll have to get a new motherboard, but it's not as bad as if you spill liquid metal on a GPU where literally the entire thing becomes useless. Um... I mean, it would still be better if your motherboard didn't die, but yeah, I, I think uh, m motherboards, like CPUs are, in my opinion, a little bit lower risk applications of liquid metal than uh, GPUs, even though I think if you got liquid metal into the CPU socket, you'd be completely screwed anyway, so I don't know. Um, may maybe maybe that's uh, not really the correct way to think about it anyway, but that that's how I, I think about it. It's like, it's easier to deal with liquid metal on CPUs than it is to deal with liquid metal on GPUs. Now, um, on a GPU, if you put liquid metal on it, you get your 10 to 20 degrees Celsius temperature reduction, and that's it. Because on modern GPUs, you don't get voltage control. So I don't know why you're putting liquid metal on it, because it's not like you can use the extra thermal headroom to push the clocks higher, or at least not significantly higher. Yes, the uh, typical GPU boost algorithm will give you like 10, 20 megahertz more uh, core clock uh, just by reducing the temperature. You might be able to push the slider like, you know, one step higher than before. Um, I don't really think putting liquid metal on, on GPUs is worth it. Um, because you don't have voltage control. If you had voltage control and the GPUs did scale with voltage, then I'd say, hey, you know, like, not not a terrible idea, but um, I really think for modern GPUs it's a total waste of time. Now, um, that doesn't mean I, I'm going to, like, you know, like, you shouldn't do it. Um, I'm just saying you're wasting your time. So, um, but what you should know when putting liquid metal on GPUs is that um, it's not enough to just protect the SMDs directly around the core. And admittedly, the owner of this card didn't even do that, right? Like, um, there's no protective uh, anything over the uh, multi... Like, actually, this is all ceramic capacitors, isn't it? Yeah, this is all multi-layer ceramic capacitors. So, yeah, they, they, they didn't put anything uh, all over the, the, the SMD components around the GPU core. And, you know, that's bad. And most people, like, you know, you show them this picture and their immediate reaction is like, oh, they didn't, you know, protect the, the SMD components around the core. But the thing is, there's really not that much of a problem in my experience with liquid metal spills. Because the main concern with liquid metal is that it sticks to solder, and the reason it sticks to solder is that it's based on gallium and tin and indium and other metals that are added to, um, you know, tweak the uh, physical properties of the liquid metal alloy. But the main point is that liquid metal contains tin. 
lead-free solder is basically 99% tin. At least most lead-free solder is like 99% tin. Um, and so that means when you have this like tin-based alloy meet this other tin-based alloy, uh, they just kind of like, well, the, the liquid metal just readily dissolves solder, right? Because they're, they're kind of the same thing. Um, and so the main concern with having liquid metal spill on your, you know, SMD components is like, yes, it'll, you know, short them out and then the card won't start. Um, or maybe it will start and die, which would, but generally it probably won't start. Like most power, like most GPU VRMs have some kind of short circuit detection mechanism, uh, so that they don't boot up with, like, a massive short circuit on them. Um, so, yeah. But, anyway, so, you know, you, you have your short circuit, but the bigger concern is that the liquid metal could dissol dissolve the solder that's holding the components in place, and so when you go to clean it, you're, you're going to take off the components. But the thing is, uh, that takes a while. Um, and this card, which, uh, you know, like, it took a couple months for me to take, get, like, get a look at this thing. Um, like, none of the components came off when I cleaned it. Like, I've cleaned the card up, and, and yeah, all the components are still there. Honestly, you can't even tell that anything really interacted with them. Even though they are, bare, like, just bare solder. Um, you know, and some of them really got, like, a you know, uh, quite quite a lot of liquid metal exposure over here and, and there. And the thing is, they're fine. Like, none of them came off when I cleaned them, and it wasn't like I was being super delicate, because I do have an awful lot of HD 7970s, a lot of them are dead, so, you know, if I needed spare capacitors, I, I didn't, didn't really see that as like, okay, I, I didn't see that as a loss. Um, so I really wasn't being super gentle with them, and everything stayed in place. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. So the SMDs here actually handled the liquid metal spill really well. I mean, yeah, the card didn't run, but the, this, this was fine. No, the part I was really concerned with when I saw this card was this right here. Um, and immediately it might not look like this is really a problem. It's mostly just covering up the solder mask and this one test point over here. But, you know, PCBs, like, uh, traces in PCBs are made of copper, so that's not going anywhere. It's not like liquid metal is going to reduce uh, a test point like that into a, uh, in, into a puddle. Um, there, there's not quite enough liquid metal to completely dissolve away that, you know, little copper test pad over there. So that's not really much of a concern. No, the real concern is that that streak of liquid metal is because of this right here. And now this is very bad. Or at least it could be really bad, because after I cleaned the card, there's no obvious short circuits on it anymore. Uh, yeah, short circuits on it anymore, so maybe this didn't really get anywhere. Um, but the main concern with something like this is if you get liquid metal under a memory chip or under the GPU core, it's not coming out, right? Because it sticks to solder. And there's no way to get at it if it gets far enough under the memory chip. Um, or at least I'm not aware of any way to get it out if it gets under a memory chip. And so if you get liquid metal that like bridges a couple solder balls under your memory chip or under your GPU core... The only way that's getting fixed is if somebody, you know, desolders the core or desolders the memory chip and then reballs it and put it puts it back on the card. And if you have a large liquid metal spill, you know, it makes it very hard like it'll be very difficult to know if like is it the liquid metal under the memory chips, is it under the GPU core? So, you know, th then then you end up potentially having to like desolder like, all of the memory chips and the core, because it's just like, well, where did it go? Because the thing is, liquid metal behaves a bit like mercury in that it likes to, you know, form little balls that roll all over the place and get stuck under things and cause havoc um, on electronics. Um, and so, that, like, so the thing with putting liquid metal on GPUs is... The, the typical advice of like, oh, you should just, you know, protect the SMDs directly around the core, that doesn't really achieve anything, in my opinion. Like, you know, yeah, it'll st stop the whole, like, oh, the SMDs are shorted out, the card doesn't start situation, but it doesn't fundamentally protect the most fragile part of the GPU, which is, you know, the solder balls under your memory chips, the solder balls under your GPU core. If, if liquid metal gets there, you're super screwed. Um, so... If you're going to be putting liquid metal on your GPU, you need to do something about the gap under the memory chip. And 
under the core. And personally, I'd probably just put li like Plasti Dip uh, around the memory chip, um, like just enough to sort of stick to the sides of the memory chip and uh, and sort of go a little bit under under the memory chip and hold it, uh, stay in place. Uh, you could probably also use like high temperature silicone. Uh, I guess if you were very handy with hot glue, you could probably form a little barrier around all of the chips with just hot glue. That could also work. Um, yeah, there's, there's like, there's a lot of options. You just need something that's not conductive and doesn't have any, like, one of the concerns would be, especially on, like, high-speed memory standards like GDDR6 and GDDR6X. With GDDR5, I don't really think, like, GDDR5 shouldn't be too sensitive, but... Um, GDDR6 and GDDR6X might be kind of sensitive to, like, changes in the capacitance, uh, like, if the material has some weird capacitive properties, that might be a problem, uh, if you use it on, to, in, like, protect a GDDR6 or GDDR6X memory chip, or even the core, because, like, ultimately the data, I don't, I don't think the data signals run on the outer edge, they're probably, like, a couple rows in, but I don't know, like, I, I've unfortunate. well, I've not really studied the pinout of a uh, GPU cores BGA that much, but anyway, um, yeah, the point is, if you're going to put liquid metal on your GPU, which I don't really think is worth it, because you can't change the voltage after the temperature reduction, you need to protect the BGA um, with something. I don't care what it is, but something, because this is the second time that I've had somebody send in a card with a liquid metal spill. Um, and I think this card got lucky, because the other card had a short circuit and it was actually under the core. Like, it just wouldn't go away with any amount of cleaning uh, until I went and, you know, just sort of desoldered the core, if, because my theory at that point was like, okay, evidently the liquid metal has to be under the core. There's, there's no other reason that the card would still be shorted. Um, and yeah, it was. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the thing is just like, if you're putting liquid metal on your GPU, um, you need to protect the BGA. Um, so yeah, and th this, yeah, and that's kind of that. Like, you really need to protect the BGA. And it, obviously, it's still a good idea to protect the SMDs, but I, I'm far more worried about, like, memory chips and stuff, because, like, f admittedly, finding a replacement capacitor for the ones around the GPU core is generally going to be very difficult, because I don't know how you'd even get the specs for a lot of them. Um, and some of them can be, like, uh, signal coupling capacitors, and so if they aren't the right value, that's going to be a major problem. But, uh, like, the worst case scenario with liquid metal getting some of these components is mostly that the component is going to fall off the card, whereas liquid metal getting under the chip, memory chips or GPU core is like, well, good luck getting it back out. So, yeah, and that's, that's all I really, well, that's most of what I wanted to cover in this video. Other than that, um, yeah, the, the heat sink for this card is, uh, well, I'm not going to trust it anymore because this, all of this is like cast aluminum and uh, gallium basically diffuses into aluminum and then breaks up the like crystal structure by sort of like the atoms of gallium basically get in between the, the aluminum atoms and then the whole thing just sort of turns into dust. Uh, so this is probably pretty structurally co compromised in this area and also it just sort of keeps spreading through the, the aluminum over time so... Yeah, this, this heat sink's probably gone at this point. Um, but hopefully the card still works. And yeah, th that's that's the main thing I wanted to say in this video is like, personally, I don't think putting liquid metal on your GPU is worth it. But if you still want to do it, please protect your memory chips and your GPU core. Um, and the SMDs too. <laughs> Like, honestly, if I was serious about running liquid metal on a, on my own, one of my own GPUs, I'd probably prep the card like I'm planning to run it in a pool. Because um, water is actually less dangerous to electronics than liquid metal is. Because water doesn't stick to things, and water does dry. Liquid metal doesn't dry. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for the video. Um... Uh, Hopefully this is somewhat helpful. Um, oh, I guess I should have also mentioned if you're like if you get if you apply liquid metal and it spills like th this much, you applied way too much. 
Okay, like you basically want your liquid metal application to be just like, if you apply way too little, it's going to look very dry. You want it to look just barely wet. You don't want a puddle of liquid metal. And I know if you've seen like teardowns of the, say the PlayStation 5 or something, uh, those like, like uh, mass produced liquid metal applications, they use what I would consider a lake of the stuff. But the thing is, they always have, like, a gasket to make sure that it doesn't escape and spill all throughout the system and destroy everything. Um, and I guess you could... Well, if you can figure out how to make your own gaskets uh, to, you know, prevent liquid metal from spilling all over the place, uh, good for you. I have no idea what I would use to make them or, like, how... Yeah, I, I don't... I've never looked into that, so I don't know anything about doing that. Um, but basically, if you're hand applying liquid metal, you want to, uh, it, like, it's better to have too little than to have too much. Because if there's too much, you're going to have a mess to clean up, and that's never fun, right? Because this is like, like, like li liquid metal is just like, you know, like, water and electronics don't mix. Well, liquid metal is so much worse than water for electronics, so... Yeah, I don't really have, like, a good good comparison <laughs> um, for, for like, a, a substance that it's like, oh, yeah, if, if it gets on something, it's almost, it, like, if it gets in the wrong place, it's almost instantly ruined. Um, like, water can kind of act like that, but, like, you know, water on things that aren't running is fine. Liquid metal on a turned-off GPU is just as dangerous as liquid metal on a running GPU. Um... So, yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. Anyway, uh, this video is getting now longer than it really needs to be. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And that's it for the video, so thanks for watching, and goodbye!